Minimalism is a really great lifestyle that focuses on experiences and fulfillment rather than accumulating stuff. But don't get rid of all of your stuff yet. At the core of minimalism is intentionality, so it's quite important to be intentional from the start. And when you're intentional, it's easier not only to make the transition into this lifestyle, but also to sustain it and not fall into the sort of reaccumulation trap, which is quite common. So in this video, I'll share with you a few ideas to help you get started with minimalism on the right foot, meaning with intentionality, and also make sure that the transition to this new lifestyle is smooth and sustainable. So the first thing I recommend doing is to take a few minutes to reflect on your why. Why do you want to become a minimalist? How do you think it will benefit you or how will it improve your life? Lifestyle changes can be difficult because they require changing our habits. But when you know your why, the change is easier and it's also more exciting because you have a purpose behind it. We all have different reasons for being minimalists. For many people, it's the realization that more stuff doesn't make them happy or for some people that they want to get out of the rat race, which happens when your possessions sort of possess you and you become a prisoner of your own life. But my reason for being a minimalist or my motivation is completely different. I spent nine years uh, traveling or backpacking nonstop between high school and university. So during those nine gap years, all I own fit in a backpack. So I just got used to owning nothing. Like I've never had a TV since I left my parents' house when I was 17. So for me, having a lot of stuff makes me feel trapped and anxious. So minimalism is just a natural thing. And I'm not the only one. I know other people that although they didn't take like nine gap years backpacking, they still have the same motivation. It's, for them, it's also because owning things, having a lot of things makes them feel stuck. So what's your why? The second idea is to decide what you want to let go. So I recently made another video about uh, the important mindset shifts that we must make to thrive on a minimalist lifestyle. In that video, I talked about the concept of essentialism. Essentialism can be summarized by less but better. The idea is to define what's most important, most valuable to you, focus more on that and discard the rest as much as possible. So the next logical step is to make an inventory of what you own. I would say of your life in general, but since I've talked about mindsets more in the other video, I'm going to focus more on the material stuff here. So make an inventory of what you own and just note if it's something that brings you joy, is neutral or feels like a burden. So a good way to start decluttering is to do a good spring cleaning or a rough spring cleaning. And it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you have a lot of things. So what I would recommend doing is to focus on one room at a time. You could do one room per week, or if you don't have that much time, you could do one room per month, or even one room of your home per two months, depending on how much time you have and how much things you possess. And for each item in the room, whether it's a piece of furniture, a book, a lamp, or a painting, decide if it brings you joy, feels neutral, or is a burden keeps what brings you joy. You can take the time to reflect upon what feels neutral and make sure to let go of what feels like a burden because it could be useful to someone else. Something that could help you is to imagine that you are moving into a smaller home and then you have to decide what do you really want to bring with you, what you don't care too much about and the things that you would rather just leave on the sidewalk. Mary Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up could be very useful here. Of course, you can also do a spring cleaning in your closet as well. And again, you can keep the pieces of clothing that you really enjoy wearing, that you feel comfortable wearing and give away what you don't feel comfortable or what you haven't worn in years. Which brings me to the next idea, create a capsule wardrobe. Creating a capsule wardrobe will help you keep your closet clean, neat and minimal. A capsule wardrobe contains a set number of items, usually it's under 40, that you can uh, easily mix and match to create many outfits. Most people have a capsule wardrobe for each season of the year. To create your capsule wardrobe, you could pick a color palette and then just stick to this palette for most items you buy. For example, most items in my closet are burgundy, gray, different tints, uh, white, black and jeans. Those are all colors that go well together and that can easily be mixed and matched. Of course, I also have items of other colors, like I have some orange, uh, yellow and red, but those are like outliers in my wardrobe. 
I think that having a capsule wardrobe is very helpful to uh, be intentional about our purchases and also just avoid that we clutter our closet with things that we end up not wearing. Know that you don't have to throw away your current wardrobe to create your capsule wardrobe. You can simply apply this concept to your next purchases. Next, after you've gone through the first, let's say, rough round of decluttering, like your spring cleaning, you could play the 30-day minimalist game. It's a 30-day minimalist challenge created by Joshua and Ryan. I won't even say their last names because I just can't, but they are the founder of the brand The Minimalists. The game's rules are very simple. So you can find someone like a friend or a family member who is willing to minimize their stuff and play the game with you in the next month. Then each person gets rid of one thing on the first day of the month, two things on the second day and three things on the third day and so on. So on day 30, you're supposed to give away 30 things. This challenge will help you sort of polish your decluttering efforts. In another video about money saving tips, I shared a tip to avoid making impulsive purchases, which is to create a spending waiting rule. So when I want to buy something, I usually don't buy it right away. I write it down and then I wait. My general rule for purchases between $50 and $100 is that I wait one week. Between $100 and $500, I wait one month. And over $500, I usually wait two months. If after one week or one month or two months, I still want the item and if it's within my budget, then I might buy it. But I would say that most often the desire to own the item usually goes away after a few weeks. Creating a spending weight rule will prevent you from reaccumulating new unessential things after all your decluttering efforts. Another way to sustain your new minimalist lifestyle and not fall into the impulsive and mindless purchases trap is to apply the rule one in, one out. The rule is very simple. Each time you want to buy something new, an unessential item, then you must give away something you already own. This rule will really help you think about it before buying something new and also make sure that the new item is worth giving something away in exchange. The next idea is to make a list of non-material joys. So if you're used to going shopping to feel good, which is very common by the way, then a good idea would be to make a list of non-material joys in your life. For example, it could be playing the guitar, walking in the woods, cooking new recipes, going to the beach, biking, listening to a specific music playlist or reading a book. And every time you feel like going shopping, see if you could do an item on your list instead. I believe everyone should have a list like that, not just minimalists. Actually, I started using this method to stop eating when I'm bored and do something healthier or more beneficial instead. It works for me with food, I would say sometimes, not all the time, but maybe it'll help you too if you tend to use shopping as a feel-good activity. Maybe it'll help you avoid making unessential purchases. Like I said earlier, I also made a video about important mindset shifts we must make to thrive on a minimalist lifestyle. I'm going to link that video somewhere on the screen and also in the description below. And I actually also made a video in which I try to convince you to become a minimalist by telling you why you should become a minimalist, which I'll also link somewhere on the screen and in the description below. Thank you for watching guys. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It helps me and the channel when you do that. And subscribe if you aren't. And I wish you a beautiful day, a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week.